Hello musicians, this is Corey Taylor from skilledmusician.com where we are helping musicians improve. Thank you all so much for checking out this video today. Now today's video, we're gonna focus on this stuff that gets overlooked but is tremendously important to make you sound great. I've called them piano hacks, um, but what they are is small little things that the pros do, um, not the big run or the big chord, but the stuff they do in between before that, um, that, that will make your playing sound amazing. So I had so many of these little hacks that I wanted to share with you all um, that I had to split this video up into two parts. So today we're gonna do part one, and then um, next week we'll release part two um, so definitely stay tuned and watch both of those. Also, check out our new um, Instagram page and check out our Facebook page as well. I have links to those in the description box, so definitely check those out. Um, we'll be releasing some new fun stuff, um, have some competitions, some contests, and we'll be um, starting some live videos um, on uh, Facebook and Instagram. So definitely uh, subscribe to those so you can um, be notified when we go live. So also remember we have a link to the sheet music in the description box below. So for each concept we're, we're, we're talking about, we create the sheet music for it and you can grab that in the description box below. Also, we have um, a free downloadable lead sheet um, for our example song that we're gonna be using. We're gonna use one example song for all of these piano hacks. And so that's free, just, just go in the description box, click the link and download it. All right, lastly, I wanted to tell you all, uh, YouTube family, uh, thank you all. Some of you all really reached out to me and was wondering why I wasn't uploading, um, but I was out of commission for a little bit. Um, but I'm back and we're releasing videos every week now. So thank y'all who checked up on me. Um, I really, really appreciate y'all. Um, so with that said, let's not waste any more time. Let's get started. So oftentimes, um, musicians that I work with and teach, um, they'll get the big stuff. Uh, but what they don't realize is that it's the small things, it's the, the little licks here, the little ideas here, the little movement here, the little delay there, uh, which makes, um, they make the song, they make the playing sound, you make, they make your playing sound amazing. Um, and so what I wanna do is I'm gonna share a whole bunch of these little small things that put together will drastically improve your playing. Um, so we're going to use a song, um, and this song is based, based off, the, off of um, a song by Donnie McClurkin called At the Mention of Your Name. So some of the melody is a little different, some of the chords are different, um, but I've created a lead sheet uh, for it. Um, you can download it, it's free, you can download it, um, just click in the description box below and download that lead sheet. Um, so that'll be the template that I'll use uh, to, uh, to demonstrate all of these ideas. And the song is an F, so I'm going to play through it. And I'm gonna play through it kind of, kind of verbatim, like the lead sheet, like how I see a lot of students play, um, and then we'll start adding some of these piano hacks, as I call them. So here's a song. Um. So that's the song, kind of with the melody, for the most part. Um, now we're going to start taking these things apart, adding things, and really improving your playing. So let's get started. So many of my students, when they're playing songs, they just play the basic chord. So for instance, in our demo um, song, um, you see the first chord is F major with the A as the melody. So Many times our students will play it as. And then the second chord is F again, F major with, in first inversion, with A in the um, bass uh, on the root, on the bottom, excuse me, and C in the melody. So we do this, right? So many of my students will play it like that. And the next chord is a B flat major chord, so the, or, or something like that. So, and there's nothing wrong with that. There, there are many times that I'll, I prefer to play that sound because it's, it's what I need in the moment. Um, but let's, have, let's create some other options. Um, so some of the first options you can do is you can extend the 
chords. In other videos, I've talked about colors. So you can extend chords and, and, and get, add different colors or notes to the chord that aren't necessarily in the basic chord. Um, I use the example of like a hamburger. A hamburger, plain hamburger is like bread, meat, bread. Um, now, if you add ketchup, you've added a different color or a different taste to the hamburger. Still a hamburger, but a different taste. You add mustard, some more taste, you know, lettuce, tomatoes. And as you add more, it's still a hamburger, but now you've transformed a plain hamburger into something delicious, you know. All right, so let's, let's transform our chords from plain chords into something more. So that's first chord. All right, so there are a couple extensions we can, we can add. So if we take a ba basic F major chord, F, A, C, right? Um, the, the first extension you can add is, is the seventh, so gives it kind of a jazzy sound. Another extension, and where I get that number seven from is you play up the scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so, so here's F major seven. Another one is the ninth, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right there, so, and I'm going to leave out the seven for now so you can just hear the nine. Let me bring the nine down. That's a nice sound, right? Okay. And let me give you one more, um, which will be the sixth or the thirteenth. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So D. So yeah, invert it, invert it. Hmm. And it looks like a D minor seven if you're familiar with these chords, but it's also an F six. That's a nice color. So those are three colors you can add to, to your chords. So let's just take the first three chords of our song. F, F inverted, and then B flat. And let's start adding um, these colors. So let's, let's, let me play it again for you. Just basic. Oh, I added colors, so, all right, let's play basic again. All right, there it is. So on this first chord, let's maybe add the 13th, so on the F, this first F, let's add this, the 13th, which is D. That's nice. On this next chord, let's add, so we invert the F, let's add the seven. Mm, that's beautiful. And on this B flat, now it's a different chord, let's add, I don't know, the 13th. Ah. So let's figure out how we got the 13th in B flat. So let's play the B flat major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Or the sixth. So that's a G. So we have our regular B flat major chord. And we add the G. So let's do it again. Let's change some. Um, on the first chord, let's play. Um, Hmm. Let's add the nine on the first chord instead of the seven. So, hmm. so. and many times I might leave out the F right here because I have it down here. So, all right. On the second chord, I had the seventh, but let's add the seventh and the ninth. So I add, keep the seventh there. And I'm going to add the ninth on the left hand here. Ooh, so let's, let's try it. Let's try it. So here it is again from the top. So we have. And then let's for our B flat, let's do just the B flat major seven. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. And do you see how we're, we're extending and adding colors to our notes? So you can go through the entire song and really begin to add colors to your, your place. So now, so now it's not just a, it's kind of stock sound, but then we, we start getting stuff like, right? These different colors. All right, so that's one way you can definitely add, um, improve your playing. Um, next piano hack is to make the melody stand out. And I have two ways to make the melody stand out. Okay, so um, you'll hear it all the time by kind of old veterans in the game, in the music game that is, that the melody is your friend, the melody is the most important thing. Um, 
And so uh, when you're playing songs, you want them to be recognizable. And so you definitely want the melody to be there. Um, and so um, you want the melody to stand out. So often I have my students, they'll come and play, and let's take our demo song, and they'll play and go, you know. And um, the melody kind of gets lost amongst all the other notes. Um, uh, so one example I use for many of my students is uh, make the like you know the group Gladys Knight and the Pips. Uh, that's an old group. Um, so make the melody Gladys Knight and the rest of the notes the Pips in the background. Um, so 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 what that means physically is you're going to play your melody louder and back down on the volume on the rest of the notes. So um, it sounds easy in, um, in theory, but it's a little harder doing it real finger control so let me try playing just the first little bit and see if you can hear it so you hear that So did you see how I made the melody stand out? I'm still playing chords underneath. These are here. But they're not front and center in your face. So. Over the melody. I don't know, make the melody stand out. So that's one way um, to really improve your playing is make the melody stand out. All right, another way to, to really separate um, the melody, um, make the melody stand out that is, is to separate it from the rest of the notes. Um, literally separate it. So let's take the first three chords of our demo songs. We have, right? So F. F again, and then B flat, right? Well, one thing you'll see me often do is do kind of a drop two style of voicing. I mean, and I have a video on drop two voicings um, that I put it, um, it was part of a bigger left hand series, but I really took some time to address drop two voicings. So definitely I'll put a card um, somewhere up here that you can click and definitely check out that video um, because we really, really got into drop two voicings pretty good. All right. so. Um, so how do I utilize that here? So if you weren't, didn't see that video yet, but drop two voicing simply means take the second highest voice and lower it. Why do we do that? So the first chord, we're going to take this F here and lower it, a down octave. And I might do another octave. But the point is, we, want, we don't want any sound competing with the melody. So we separate the melody. Same thing with this chord, that's A. I have it down here. I can put it here. You see? You can literally see as I play, there's no note really close to the melody. There's always a, at least a, more than a third distance. No. All right, now then I did something. Um, but the whole idea is to separate the melody um, from the rest of the chord. Um, and that way your melody ends up sticking out and it, it's, it's really... Um, See this? So when you're playing, you don't really have to worry about playing harder because the melody is, has this separation. So that's another way you can improve your play using that piano hack of separating the melody from the rest of the chord.
Okay, this is this is a really really big one. This is one that we use all the time to really improve the playing, and that's what is it? So rhythmically displacing voicings, voices. So rhythmically displacing voices. Um, that's technical terms for meaning don't play everything at the same time. So many of my students, when they play, they'll play block chords. Which is okay, and has a, and there's a, definitely a time to do that. Um, but not all the time. So I want to give you some more options. Um, so there, I'll, let me give you, I'll give you four ways to displace um, the voices. The first way, um, play the melody first, and then the rest of the chord. All right, so let's try that. So here it is. You see? You see, that's really, um, and it works uh, often. Now, you don't want to do it everywhere because then you get this kind of weird timing issue. But it's definitely a, a great way um, to separate the melody, as we talked about previously. But really, um, to get away from these block chord sound, right? Okay. Um, another way, uh, let's see. Let's do melody. So the melody, the outside voices, the melody, and the lowest voice in my left hand. Let's do those together. So here we go. So that idea right there really, really is used often. I mean, often, often. Um, I don't really, I haven't really heard a musician not do that. Um, jazz, gospel, whatever genre you choose, that option is really used heavily. So definitely get that one under your belts using playing the melody and the, the outside voices, the highest and the lowest voice first, and then playing the inside voices. Um, let me give you another one. Um, oh, playing the left hand guide tone first. Um, so if you don't know what a guide tone is, um, it's the third and seventh of the chord. So if we're playing, for example, F major seven, um, you want to play uh, the third or the seventh. Now, um, so third or seventh or third and sixth, and depending on the chord, third or sixth, depending on the chord. All right, so I utilize this often on dominant chords. And so what the idea is, is playing the guide tone in your, in your left hand first before you play the rest of the chord. Um, so, tell you what, I'm going to add a chord here just for fun. So, after this B flat, I'm gonna add a B7 sharp nine sharp five. Do you see that? And so it's for this B7 sharp nine sharp five, the guide tones are, right, D sharp and this A, right? So, so, so my, so you see what I did? I, I hit the guide tone first. And I often do the third, so I, I won't use the seventh much. Um, I'll often use the third, so. You see? All right, there's another one, let's try the one. So I'm gonna do that one again. Ba, ba, ba. Mm, oh. Right here. Yeah. So, um, and what I'm doing is, I know I'm going to, for instance, for that B7 sharp nine sharp five, I know I'm going, uh, I know I'm going to play the third in my left hand. So I'll proceed it by a half step, maybe two half steps. Maybe I'll surround it. Maybe I'll do double surround. You know, I might, you know, this is what, you know, whatever. So, right. All right, yeah. All right, 
So that's another way by playing the left hand um, guy tone first. And then uh, let's see, I have one more for you. And that's displacing the hand. So playing, um, for me, um, I enjoy playing the right hand first followed by the left hand. So let me show you. Um, you see? Now you don't want to use it everywhere. So you see, it gives you this, and what's cool about this is, um, especially in your right hand when you're playing kind of extensions, when you play your right hand, kind of the, the, it kind of floats a little bit because we, we don't have context, and then you add the left hand, which kind of grounds the sound. So, what? Uh, you see, and then now I'm, I'm, I've changed the chord a little bit. So, I'm sorry, let's try it again. This kind of floats. Then we give it grounding, then like that. So it's it's a cool effect. See? Yeah. Right, cool, cool, cool. So that's four ways um, to rhythmically displace your voices. So the first way was play just the melody by itself. And then the rest of the chord. The second way was play the melody and so the outside voices, the melody and lowest note to get together, and then add the vo middle voices. Third way was play um, the guy tone in your left hand first, and then the rest of the chord. And then the fourth way is play one hand before the other. And I generally play my right hand before my left hand. All right, so that's another way to um, another piano hack for you to improve your playing. So another piano hack for you that will dramatically change your sound um, is grace notes. Um, now, anybody in gospel, jazz, R&B, country, we all use grace notes. And so the idea of grace notes is playing another note right before you play your target note. So let's say I'm just going to play A. So I will play... Um, and for today, I'm going to demonstrate two types of grace notes. So the chromatic grace note is one that's a uh, half step below. So we'll say G sharp. So, so let's say I'm playing A on the beat. So right, and a, so right before my, I'm supposed to play my target note, I'm sorry, I'm playing that G sharp. Another one is kind of what I call scalar. Um, Grace note, which is means in the scale. So, so in that case, if I'm in F, for instance, the one below would be G. You see that? So we have G or G sharp. A different sound, and they're appropriate for different occasions, and I, I utilize both of them. Um, so now, let me give you, let me give you two different methodologies for adding grace notes. Um, there, there are many, many, many ways, but this is just a way to get you started if you're unfamiliar with these. Okay, so one way is let's take a, a major triad in root position. So let's stick with the key of F and F major triad. Here's what I like to do. I like to take my middle note, which is the, the A, and I like to grace into that note. So right here. That sound should sound familiar too, so if I can, you know that sound, All right? Let's try the G. Uh, probably heard that sound before, All right? You know, <laughs> All right, so, All right? Now, let me give you a little tip because most people miss this and, um, People I see trying to play grace notes, many times they'll play them wrong. In this case, it's it's a uh, it's not a true grace note. Like so, um, in essence, instead of, it's not before the chord. Like you play this, and then you play the chord. Like that's not really what it is. 
Oh, or what it is is. Do you see that? Or okay, so let me show you one more way to grace, which is doing both the G and the G sharp. So doing both the scalar and the chromatic one together. Ooh. This is one gospel musicians use all the time. And it's kind of a way to kind of bend the notes a little bit. We can't really bend notes on the piano unless you use the, the pitch bend. But so this is our way of kind of bending, getting in between the notes, right? All right. So, um, so let's say, well, what happens when you're playing inversions of chords? So let's say um, we have, we know if we're playing in root position, you know, um, we can grace into this A. What happens when we invert the chord? Here. I'm still gonna grace into the A, even if inverted. Or even when I invert up, so I'm gonna bring it down an octave. You hear it? All right, so um, now one cool thing, um, let me give you two more um, cool things you can do with these is, um, and this works over every chord, every major chord. Um, so let's go to C. Let's try it here. So it'd be, um, or, or, right? Um, all right. So um, now you'll see me sliding um, from one note to the next. That's, that's something we do, um, but that doesn't work in every key. Um, so you should get uh, familiar with playing two fingers as well. Um, it works when you're able to slide from the black keys down to the white keys, but you can't really slide up. That's, that's, that's at least very difficult. So you should get familiar with using, using two fingers, not one all the time. Okay. Now one cool thing is, um, let's say I'm playing a B flat major with some extension. So I have a B flat major chord, major nine. So well, if you look up here, this is a F major triad right there. Well, I can still do my grace note from F like over B flat. Or, and what I did was I went back down, <laughs> right? Do you hear it? Um, so, and this idea works over minor chords. Now, our minor chord in root position doesn't really work like that. But let's say we played a D minor 11. So, D minor 7, 9, 11. Well, let's look on top right there. That is a C major triad. So now I'm gonna do the same thing there, right? You see? Right? All right, so um, you can utilize them on minor chords, uh, major, majors with different extensions. Um, so look for that triad and then make it happen there. So that's one way you can think of using grace notes. Another way, um, if you're just getting started, you, you, it's still a little confusing to you. Another way you can utilize them is, uh, I'll tell some of my students here, just try grace, gracing the third and sixth of the key. So in the key of F, the third note is A, and the sixth note is D. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I tell my students, anytime, just practice now, anytime you see an A and D, and you're in the key of F, just grace into the note. So, right? Did you hear it? Uh, so anytime I'm playing, I'm playing A and D, I'm gracing into, I'm trying to grace into um, both of them. And that way I don't have to think about the chords, I'm just thinking A and D. Whenever I see A and D, use those. Now, that's a great way to get started gracing at the notes, okay? So grace notes, two ways. Take the middle chord, middle note, the third of the chord, of a major chord, and grace into that. Um, or just take the third and sixth of the key and grace into those two. Okay, so that's grace notes. Okay, wow, so you made it through those. All right, great job. Thanks for watching all the way through. Now, your job now is to go and try to apply these. Um, and it, it might take a week, it might take two weeks, um, it might take a month, it might take 
two hours, um, but definitely apply them each one individually, get it down and master it, and then move on to the next one. All right, remember we have sheet music um, in the description box for each concept, so definitely grab that. Um, and also check out our social media pages, um, our Instagram page and Facebook page, and I'll put a link to those in the description box below. All right, so thank y'all so much for watching this. Again, my name is Corey Taylor from skilletmusician.com, where we are helping musicians improve. So hopefully this video has helped you improve. So until the next one, be blessed and happy practicing.